The internet has torn down national borders in many aspects of our daily life. Electronic communication takes place across the globe. Digital goods and services are purchased without regard for their origin. And media audiences are now global rather than local. Accordingly, some of the regulatory issues surrounding digital goods and services transcend regional boundaries. Global firms have reached a degree of dominance in some of their activities such that competition policy has taken on a global dimension. In a similar way, websites can be reached by people from everywhere around the globe, which can lead to tensions when privacy laws are enacted on a national or regional level. In such a world, regulating is challenging. As international coordination mechanisms have often proven ineffective, individual countries and regions have increasingly enacted legal regimes for the digital world, even if these regimes have spillovers outside their own legal territory. For example, some observers say that the European Union has de facto exported several of its strict regulatory laws outside its borders through a combination of market mechanisms and unilateral regulatory globalization, introducing the idea of a Brussels effect. In their paper, European Privacy Law and Global Markets for Data, four researchers from economics, management, and law ask two questions in context of the European Union's recently introduced privacy regulation, the General Data Protection Regulation, or in short, GDPR. First, has the GDPR led websites outside the European Union to make changes that are in line with the stricter privacy requirements of the GDPR? And second, has the GDPR, which tackles issues of privacy and personal data, affected other domains of public and regulatory interest, such as competition or trade policy? In their paper, Poikert, Bechtold, Vatikas, and Kretschmer follow over 100,000 websites for a total of 18 months before and after the introduction of the GDPR. They measure interactions between websites and third parties by the HTTP requests that websites send. They collect information about identity and location of third parties that a website interacts with the total number of third-party requests, and the number of cookies, combining this data with demographic information about website audiences. The analysis in the paper shows that, indeed, EU privacy regulation spilled over both outside its territorial limits and the policy domain it was designed to address. In order to understand the implications of the paper, let's look at the GDPR first. Designed as the cornerstone of European privacy law, the GDPR became applicable in 2018 and is often considered the most comprehensive, globally leading privacy regime. It establishes common rules on data processing throughout the European Union and is directly binding for companies and residents in the European Union and beyond, affecting consumers, firms, and countries outside the European Union through a variety of mechanisms. The European Commission predicted before the GDPR was enacted that the GDPR would decrease costs for businesses by harmonizing privacy laws across the European Union, that it would decrease overall compliance costs, and that it would increase the attractiveness of the European Union as a location to do business. In their paper, the researchers are interested whether the GDPR has affected EU and non-EU websites in a different manner. In their data, they see a substantial and sudden drop in how often websites integrate cookies or other trackers from third-party domains just after the enactment of the GDPR. Interestingly, this drop does not only occur with websites catering to EU audiences, but also with international websites. The paper estimates that the reduction is 8% for EU websites and 2% for non-EU websites. However, this change is rather short-lived. According to model predictions, only four months after the GDPR was enacted, international websites rebound to the level directly before the GDPR. Websites with an EU audience reverted to their initial level after 22 months. 
Most external data requests of websites are cookies collecting personal data. Cookies by the website itself, so-called first-party cookies, are typically used for website optimization and personalization, while information gathered by externally supplied cookies, so-called third-party cookies, is frequently resold to other websites and or firms using personal data for their business model. The paper observes a sharp decrease in third-party cookies directly after GDPR comes into force. The opposite holds for first-party cookies, which usually do not involve sharing information with others. The paper estimates that the number of third parties that send cookies decreases by about 13% for EU websites and 6% for international websites. These findings suggest that the GDPR has indeed contributed to minimizing data collection by websites. Let's give the mic to one of the authors of the study. The fact that websites reduce interaction with third-party providers does of course not necessarily mean that they comply with the GDPR. But most of these interactions involve cookies, and cookies very often include personal data. Therefore, we think that this implies that websites have reduced the sharing and collection of personal data. But is the GDPR only about privacy law? Let's turn to how the GDPR has affected market structure. The paper finds strong evidence that the market for web technologies becomes more concentrated after the GDPR. Google sticks out as the clear winner, both regarding EU and international websites. Market shares of all other firms remain unchanged or decrease substantially. Google gains most in the analytics market and the advertising market, markets in which Google has already been dominant before the GDPR. These results indicate an unintended and perhaps ironic effect of the GDPR. It is costly to comply with the data security and privacy requirements of the GDPR. And there is quite some anecdotal evidence that firms have invested significant amounts of money to become compliant. Our study suggests that in this race towards compliance, large firms may have had an advantage because they provide many privacy sensitive web tracking technologies and they can benefit from economies of scale. So ultimately, the GDPR may have favored large US based tech giants as they have the means to become compliant. Now that we have seen how GDPR has affected data gathering and competition policy, let's turn to trade policy. The study finds that even websites catering to a non-EU audience reduce their use of third-party web technology providers after the GDPR. They also increasingly rely on web technology providers in the EU. This is consistent with the broad territorial application of the GDPR. Under general principles of international public law, the European Union cannot regulate the processing of personal data that takes place outside of and is not related to the EU. Yet as the authors explain in more detail in their study, the European Union has expanded the de facto territorial reach of the European privacy laws well beyond its geographical boundaries. Their study suggests that European Union relations are indeed exported to firms outside the immediate territory of the Union and as such affect trade opportunities and trade flows. Let us summarize some of the main findings of the study. First, the GDPR was largely successful in that EU-based websites changed their strategies to more privacy-sensitive technologies. Second. Even websites outside the EU changed modes of operation with the GDPR, but to a lesser extent. Third, the market for web tracking technologies became more concentrated. How can we explain these patterns? The GDPR has created considerable legal uncertainty. Key terms in the GDPR are not well defined, and only time will tell how privacy authorities and courts are interpreting these terms. In addition, the GDPR can apply to websites and tracking providers outside the European Union. Data controllers and processors can be held jointly responsible for privacy violations. The possible sanctions under the GDPR have been increased. And the organization and coordination among European data protection authorities has been increased. All this has led to a significant increase in compliance risks. Compared to the world before the GDPR, it has now become a real business risk 
to violate European privacy rules. Interacting with less technology providers and using own technology is a good way to reduce exposure to compliance risks. Also, choosing large technology providers can help, because large technology providers tend to have more resources to deal with the legal challenges of the GDPR. Our results raised the question of how privacy and antitrust policy are related. For a long time, both areas of the law have been regarded as distinct areas with different goals, remedies and enforcement mechanisms. However, as the processing of personal data, analyzing user profiles and predicting consumer behavior have become central features of highly concentrated internet markets, we may have to rethink the intersection between privacy and antitrust policy. It will become increasingly difficult to design privacy policies in a way that do not have immediate implications for antitrust policy and vice versa. The study European Privacy Law and Global Markets for Data by researchers Koikert, Bechtold, Vatikas and Kretschmer tell us a lot about how privacy, competition and trade policy interact in the digital age. But the study also demonstrates the power of evidence-based policymaking in today's world. Over the last years, large amounts of fine-grained data about firm and consumer data on the Internet have become available. This has enabled empirical researchers from various disciplines to analyze Internet regulation on a global scale. Of course, a single study is only a small building block towards a better understanding of how to govern the Internet. But digitization has not only created new challenges for the privacy interests of individuals and society's interests for healthy competition, it has also provided researchers with powerful new tools to assess how to govern the Internet.